Hi, this time I'm going to talk about shapeshifters in role-playing games. I think that there is a bit of a missing potential when using these uh, scary enemies. Shapeshifters in role-playing games feel too natural at times because we play so many fantasy games and science fantasy games, etc. And it's sometimes common for a hero or a villain to turn into, let's say, a werewolf or a werebear or many other things. Sometimes you are cursed or afflicted by a certain um, magical disease of sorts or sometimes the, the character was born that way but you sometimes get used to seeing those there are so many adventures that oh in this adventure you're fighting a pack of uh, were rats or werewolves or were bats or where there are many and sometimes it just feels uh, as natural as uh, or as common as fighting orcs so <laughs> in, in this video i will try to what would you say restore that sense of mm, of creepiness, of moodiness, of mystery, of the different shapeshifters or like entropies. So I, I hope uh, some of the things that I will mention here will help you to create some interesting adventures and perhaps an entire campaign uh, based around these creatures, but, but taking a bit of inspiration from myth and legend and folklore. So many of you are already familiar with the uh, the ways that werewolves and werewolves, etc., are used in role-playing games. Um, they're more like a template at times that you put over a certain character, or uh, the, uh, other times it just feels like a very um, unsurprising monster because you already know that, oh, he probably changes a shape at will, or maybe mm, when the moon shines or there is a full moon, etc., that character transforms but if you look at it from a folklore uh, angle uh, it's actually quite interesting and can get potentially creepy it has to do a lot with uh, dark sorcery and um, uh, sacrificing animals to use the life force of that animal to transform into something and using the, the, that condition of a shapeshifter that it feels kind of like they put a cloak over them like an etheric cloak of sorts and sometimes also mixes up with other types of um, mm, paranormal phenomena like uh, ethereal projection and astral projection etc so i think that angle is a lot more interesting and could serve to create some really scary and perhaps surprising adventures uh, seeing the different methods in folklore as to how one supposedly turns into this uh, mm, horrific beast of sorts and uh, it really lends itself uh, to create a lot of uh, scary mysteries so I'm going to share with you a story that is probably not that, that well known or that popular because uh, when it comes to werewolves, you could talk about uh, the most popular ones, perhaps like the Beast of Javadan. Oh, uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, I did a review for this movie, The Brotherhood of the Wolves, and, uh, Le Pac de Loup. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below so, so you can watch it. It's a really cool... Uh, it combines uh, action with uh, horror and mystery. It's really an, a really awesome film, so I recommend that you watch that one. It features uh, The Vista of Javadan. But this time, I'm going to talk about a story that I heard uh, quite some time ago. Mm, it's not that popular as I was telling you. Perhaps some of you have heard of it. And uh, in advance, I apologize if I uh, miss some details because I'm uh, doing it by memory. And this story is supposed to be to have happened, one of those uh, real horror stories. And it was shared by this, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember the nationality of, of the uh, gentleman that experienced this story, but it's supposed to, it happened in France. It, uh, this story was distributed through a, an occult magazine of sorts in certain circles. So 
we have our protagonist, I'm going to call him the protagonist. And he moved to this very small village. I think there were only like um, less than 10 houses uh, in making the village, uh, comprising the, the, the structure of the village. Mm. And in that particular village, there were these uh, strange happenings, these phenomena of weird lights, like ghostly uh, fires that were seen every now and then. And it had a bit of a bad reputation. So the protagonist purchased a large property because even though there were just a few houses, each of those houses uh, could um, house or keep inside uh, a number of families. So the protagonist uh, purchased this huge property and part of the property served as a bit like a warehouse and as and a general goods store for the entire village. And um, he spent his life there uh, selling uh, cheese and lard, all sorts of things, mostly farm products. The property came with a few things, including a very friendly dog. And there is a bit of a mystery related to this dog, and we will get further into that in a few minutes. But I guess you could say that the villain of the story is this female character that I will refer to as Bruja. As many of you know, a Bruja is... Uh, in Spanish, it is used to, to, uh, to refer to a dark sorceress. I would say that a Bruja is witch, but I've never agreed to that uh, translation or definition because witch comes from the Indo-European word of uh, Vitki or Vice, which means like a wise one. So Bruja always has a, like a negative connotation. It, it usually, uh, so it, it seems a bit nonsensical to me that someone evil would be wise. So I would call that character Bruja. So Bruja was a very ugly woman and a very evil one too. It was one of those um, people that always wanted to uh, make others feel bad about themselves and she always like had this mocking attitude towards others like always uh, laughing at people and uh, like she always she was always like telling her this herself this is all like a private joke and she always looked at everyone as, as if everyone around her was some sort of clown or clowns and she was really ugly that's the funny thing maybe she had a bit like an inferiority complex who knows uh, she was uh, really short and fat and she had like these really thick lips and she had uh, the, almost like a big nose and uh, she had uh, some scruffy hair uh, kind of like uh, with gray hairs and uh, brown tones at the same time and uh, her eyes were quite strange because I think that the right eye was gray and the left eye uh, she had blue but uh, on the lower part of the eye she had uh, like a greenish gray tone uh, and everyone in the village uh, knew that she was some sort of uh, evil practitioner of dark arts she uh, could curse people uh, cause all sorts of uh, disease and death but uh, she, uh, those that didn't bend to her will, she usually attacked. Uh, she was very selfish, uh, wanted to dominate and enslave everyone, even though she was a terrible uh, person. And so everybody kind of like uh, stepped out of her way. But our protagonist, uh, he had recently arrived. You kind of get the sense that he was like a, like a city person, to put it in a way. And he wasn't... Uh, as scared of that, of, of getting her angry. Because there are places, even today, there are places dominated by, by fear. There are, for example, tribes that if you mention like the skinwalker or things like that, oh no, the, the skinwalker is going to attack you and you can do nothing against that entity. So they had, she had that sort of control over people. But this man, the protagonist, was very brave. I think he was, uh, he participated in a battle, I'm not sure. So uh, he kept selling his goods, and every time this uh, bruja 
came uh, to her to his store she purchased her his uh, her goods but she was always like uh, with a mocking or a rude attitude uh, sending like uh, let's say obnoxious stares uh, at his way and the dog that he had in his property that I was telling you here is a bit of the mystery the dog had the exact same eyes as the bruja so it's quite a mystery it's, it's incredible that is his the dog's right eye was gray and the other eye was blue and getting greener and darker on the lower part and the dog either got either uh, really scared or really angry at the bruja when she visited the store they even either uh, they had to lock the dog or uh, chain him or sometimes the dog would just uh, sprint out of that place so uh, it was uh, everything was so mysterious and creepy and throughout the entire time all of those ghostly lights kept appearing uh, in the village at night one time our protagonist was uh, walking around with his friend they had uh, they were walking the dog as well and that's the thing the dog was really friendly and only acted so strange towards that uh, bruja and they passed near the house of the bruja and she uh, stepped out of her house and she leaned on the wall and she started smiling at them quite evilly and they started to feel really uneasy unnerved really like there was some sort of threat and then the dog became hysterical i guess you could say it just uh, went nuts started uh, yelping and barking and started to run away from the bruja and our protagonist he had decided to that i've had enough like no nonsense so uh, he turned around and looked at the bruja with great rage and then he turned around and looked at his dog and he commanded the dog to come to him so uh, the dog obediently came uh, towards his master and he took, took the dog by the leash but then he, he described that he felt like his fighting intention or spirit was somewhat uh, affected the dog and the dog suddenly became really angry at the bruja and just darted after her and she got really scared and she locked herself inside her house and the dog kept uh, scratching and biting at the door and slamming against the door so um, they had to pull the door the dog away from the door and even um, later on uh, many other uh, things kept happening that is there were uh, these ghostly lights and uh, there were rumors that there were some strange apparitions at night but uh, the protagonist uh, paid it no more heed uh, or no, uh, didn't pay too much attention to it and eventually had like a, this this reunion with uh, a lot of uh, friends and family they had like a feast and uh, many of them stayed overnight so he gave his bedroom to one of his uh, close friends I think and he went to this other room to spend the night and he was a very cautious man he always had his um, cavalry saver with him so he went to bed uh, turned off the lights and uh, tried to get some sleep but later on that night he heard scratching and growling uh, just outside the house and he thought, he thought that maybe the dog was outside but he walked around inside the house and the dog was sleeping peacefully in some other room so that was strange and just to be careful he opened the front door and there was nothing outside i think it was a terrible idea to open the <laughs> front door so he closed it and he walked across a couple of doors because his uh, room was behind some doors and he he was closing the doors as he walked and uh, went to bed tried to get some sleep and once again he started hearing this uh, scratching and growling and um, but this time it sounded a bit closer just a couple of of doors away from him so then he started to get really nervous and once again he turned on the lights uh, i guess it would have been an oil lamp i'm not exactly sure this happened around the 1893 more or less more or less and uh, he went to that door and he opened it and there was nothing there he closed the door went into his room 
and close the door of course and he tried to go to sleep once again but this time the scratching and the growling was were happening right outside of his bedroom and he started to see this beast this subtle like I guess you could call it like an energy beast this strange subtle thing uh, manifesting itself through the door as if it were trying to get into the room so uh, in I guess I guess you could say by reflex or perhaps it was uh, an act of great bravery think of it as you will uh, he grabbed his cavalry saber, uh, saber and he struck the entity and there was this flash of light and the entity like dissipated he got it right on the head he kind of cut and diagonally downward downwards and the entity disappeared the strange thing were the sparks that the blade produced see he thought maybe there was like a nail or something out of, of metal in the door uh, so he didn't know what to think about the entire thing and he went to bed uh, next morning he checked the door and there were no nails no no nothing nothing metallic where he struck and uh, during uh, breakfast he told uh, uh, some people his strange um, that strange event and uh, his family uh, family and friends laughed at him like oh you probably had too much too many drinks uh, you're probably drunk and etc but his closest friend uh, believed him and he thought it was quite strange so later on they were walking around the uh, village and they got um, somebody told them that Bruja uh, didn't had never had, hadn't had not uh, she she didn't go out of the house. So they found it a bit strange because it was one of those small towns that everybody was aware of everything. And just on a hunch, the uh, protagonist went to her house and knocked on her door. She was uh, his client after all, but she didn't open the door. So they they decided to force their way inside and they found the bruja uh, on her bed uh, with a cut probably from a saber across her head she was bleeding terribly and they didn't know what to do they immediately contacted the doctor and he did everything that he, he could to save her but she during her last moments she just kind of like uh, stood up for a bit and then she fell down again uh, on, never to wake up again she died and the doctor said it was quite strange it was as if somebody had cut her head very strange considering that this uh, protagonist had cut this strange like uh, like a were beast forming through the door and after that Bruja died the ghostly fires and strange phenomena in the village stopped happening so uh, this uh, protagonist considers that event to be like an, uh, his initiation into uh, like uh, paranormal things and the occult because uh, later on he became like a sort of like a practitioner so it's quite strange and it, it seems almost like as if by instinct he knew what to do when facing off against this horrible entity that was probably the the bruja that performed some sort of like ethereal projection in the shape of this beast or dog but that's really strange did you notice that it, there is this the fact according to that uh, story that the witch had the same eyes as the dog what does that mean could it be that perhaps she somehow stole like the what would you call it the etheric body of the dog and she like you know like transformed into this ghostly beast <laughs> it's quite mysterious so um, i think that you could create some very interesting adventures out of this story maybe um, feature some like anthropic enemies or shape-shifting enemies but uh, players are usually expecting them to be a bit more material but what if this it's some sort of like an evil sorcerer or priest or whatever that uh, goes out of his uh, body and uh, it assumes this shape of a ghostly creature or entity that looks like a werewolf or a werebear, etc. You can create some really interesting mysteries and in many different uh, genres and uh, types of role-playing games because in fantasy games, of course, there are many ways to work that into a story, but perhaps 
in you could play Shadowrun and that there is this werewolf that is attacking people or a group of werewolves and they actually uh, erase all evidence using uh, internet and other high-tech resources and it will be like a very complicated mystery to see who is um, doing these uh, shape-shifting projections or whatever and, and killing people and attacking uh, the, I think that's a good um, excuse for an adventure or perhaps uh, a bit of a short campaign I don't know how much you can play with that concept regardless an interesting story and I hope it will um, be of use to you to create some interesting scary stories scary adventures uh, this month of October well um, I'll, I'll see if I can uh, dig out more scary content thanks for watching this video if you have any comments or questions please let me know see you later